Welcome to Creating Disney Magic with Lee Cockrell. Lessons in leadership, management, and customer service. You can create magic too. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and we are starting on a whole new path, Lee. This is episode 501. We were just warming up on the first 500. So now we're on to the next 500, and I think we finally figured out what we're doing. So the next 500 will be even better. Well... I think that's right, and it's starting out, so I'll know how long we've been doing it, because it's been 10 years, and I'm having to replace two air conditioners, which are about that age. And actually, I just sent you today a text that when we connected in 2014. I don't know if you got it yet, but it's... Uh, I, yeah. So. I did. I thought that was pretty neat. The, our first, when Lee and I became connected on LinkedIn... Uh, in 2014 and lee sent me a message and and he just resent it to me today yeah i was looking through them of all the people who we'd connected with so anyway let's let's do it today all right so where we're going to start is this idea of performance excellence we we've got a, a course on performance excellence and i wanted to go deeper there's other other points around it lee talks about one of them is Breaking down barriers. So, Lee, I want to talk about that idea of breaking down barriers. What When you say you have to break down barriers to achieve performance excellence, what's behind that? Yeah, I think when we started thinking about that at Disney, how we could uh, bring the whole organization together to kind of be on the same page, to uh, all understand the same vision, the goals, or what, that we were working together a part of that is breaking down barriers because so often departments don't uh, cooperate. They don't work with each other. They don't, uh, they're, they're not cooperative. Uh, 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 they kind of get in their silos, as we said, or you have even as individuals, sometimes we have a relationship problem with somebody. We don't want to work with them. Who knows why? But at the end of the day, as a good leader, I think we've all got to sit back and think about, okay, uh, am I causing this problem or is somebody else? If I'm causing it, I need to go talk to them and let this go and tell them I'm sorry and we need to work together for the sake of uh, what the, the company and, and our cast members and guests. And uh, if it's them <laughs> creating it, then I need to go talk to them also about how do we pull out of this. And uh and not have this relationship anymore because so often when you have barriers, you uh, you ignore people. You don't really want to do that or you put off a meeting with them or you put off a conversation with them. Or, you know, we all do that. We kind of walk away from people we don't enjoy uh, working with or being with or having an interaction with. And and uh, so, uh, you know, it's like uh, I said, every day you're going to wake up in the morning and and we're just waiting to see what obstacles we're going to have today before we get to evening time and back to bed. And uh, that's what barrier you got to think about. It's easy to create an obstacle. It's easy to create a barrier by uh, your own attitude or not getting work back to people on time. So they kind of push you out of the way. They don't trust you anymore. Um and sometimes you just don't even know why there's a barrier. Some people just, you, you just don't know. And I think what I've really learned is when you don't know and, and you feel it, and you know it's there, you got to go, you got to be the one to step up and go find out why, because we need to stay committed to the job that we took. And uh, that job includes taking care of each other, our, our cast members, our guests, and when uh, when you don't uh, break down those barriers, one of those is going to suffer, and it could even be you because all of a sudden you get a reputation for this person that's difficult, and never agrees, and always has a better idea, and doesn't not supportive, and so I think uh, all of us, and sometimes we have those at home or with our children, or uh, you know something that's really bothering you and getting on your nerves, and you haven't sat down and talked to them about it yet, and uh, to get it on. The the straight and narrow going in the right direction. So it happens in our lives. There's barriers to performance. There's barriers to uh, being on, you know, one barrier to being on time is you don't have a system for keeping yourself organized. And that can be a major barrier for your advancement. Uh, uh, knowledge, lack of knowledge can be a barrier to you. Uh, you. You don't have enough expertise, so you're not really considered for that promotion because somebody else has got more. And I think about uh, we've got to teach everybody to think about uh, 
what kinds of things do they need to do to get what they want and what kind of attitude they have to have, what kind of reliability, what kind of knowledge, what kind of uh, working together. Uh, you know, if there's any problem, either you need to figure it out or you need to try to get somebody to tell you what it is. And, uh, and I would say that's most of the problems in life. People don't realize why they're being held back and they don't understand there is a barrier and because uh, a lot of people even when there's a barrier a lot of people smile and say you know everything's great <laughs> but they don't really work with you and they don't tell you the truth and they're afraid to come to you and they uh, have had a bad experience in the past or it could be them being insecure not having the courage to go to speak up give your point of view raise your hand uh, say i don't agree with that uh, here's another idea would you consider this so it's it's complicated, like people are, and it's just a good thing to think about so that uh, you don't go two years with something you should have known two weeks ago, you know, and uh, that it doesn't continue. And then you find out later that, uh, you know, I wrote a story once when I was in high school, the man who found out too late <laughs> you know, what his problem was. And that happens. And because we like to ignore those things, too, because they're not a lot of fun to deal with. And a lot of times it's an ego thing. And it's, uh, you know, even men, a lot of men don't like to apologize. <laughs> you know, say, I'm sorry. Say, it was my fault. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, barriers and uh, thinking about that from uh, obstacles. So uh, those may be one of the problems you could if you just sit down and be honest with yourself and get your team to have you trust you and have a good environment and culture, they'll tell you the truth, you get better. And when you get better, they get a better opportunity. You run a better business. Your career turns out better. You stay married longer. Uh, your kids uh, uh, are settled in because they know they can come to you because you've created that. So there's so many ways to think about uh, the barriers we set up in our lives. So. I just think about people, you know, well, I'm, I'm not going to call them, you know, it's just going to, I don't want to really deal with that one. I should pick up the phone, call them and get it out of the way. Or, um, so, uh, just a good subject to, uh, for all of us. Uh, everything doesn't, is not going as well as we think it is. And we're not as good as we think we are, <laughs> frankly. Yeah. Lee, you came up, this is, this is mildly related this topic i was talking to my daughter about she's a junior in high school and she was dealing talking about something a situation at school and i said gretel sometimes the kindest thing you can do for someone is to be candid and she said what does candid mean and i said well mr lee would tell you <laughs> candor is truth with empathy yeah. And and I think that's what it takes often to remove some barriers. If you know someone has a barrier and you see it that it's getting in there the kindest thing you can do is is be candid and let them know. And tell them this is for you. I I know this is hurting you and it's hurting your reputation. Absolutely. And uh they may not like it the day you do it, but they'll get over it and uh, they'll learn to trust you because you, and then you got a partner that maybe you both help each other in the future. Uh, look yeah, each other. that's right. And one time I was talking to John Jarvis, who was the director of the national park service for eight years during both of Obama's terms. And he told me there's always someone willing to say no, no matter what you're trying to do, there's always someone willing to say no. And I think that's one important to understand in your career. And two, as a leader to understand part of your job is to help the people on your team get around the people that will always say no and get through barriers and remove obstacles. It is. That is basically your job is to yeah, manage all of this. And uh, yeah, because most of the problems in business are people. You know, I made a mistake, didn't do it on time. Uh, we're going to get back. I mean, well, I always say every every problem in business is a person that didn't do what they say they're going to do. Or there's a uh, we don't have this camaraderie or we don't have a really good culture in the company where everybody feels comfortable. So, Because when you get that, it's uh, the results skyrocket. I mean, it's amazing when you get all the brains working on something and for the same reason. It's amazing what happens and you make less mistakes and you have less catastrophes. 
And there's just a million examples of that in the world where somebody did something because they didn't know any better and it created a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, Lee, the, something we have done ties into this. We have revamped the Cockrell Academy because we were being told from time to time, not of the hundreds of people enrolled in the Cockrell Academy, not everyone was saying it, but I always use this rule that if one person says it, there's 10 other people that thought it. So pay attention. And we had some people that were saying, Hey, when, when you sign up for the Cockrell Academy, the content is great, but there's so much, where do I begin? What do you recommend? What should I do? Well, we heard that enough to know, okay, we need to make this a little different experience. So in, in the past, you would sign up for the Cockrell Academy and you got access to everything. Now it is more of a program. It's more like walking through exhibits in, in the sense that you will be guided by me and Lee on, on a path to becoming a better leader through all the content in the Cockrell Academy. I think you'll you'll really like what we've done with it. It is 12 months long. So whether you, if you sign up now, you get it for a whole year. The program takes a whole year. And and I think you'll, you will enjoy that journey to become a better leader. Just go to cockerelacademy.com. I say all that lead to say that was somewhere where we found there was a barrier to people learning about leadership management, customer service in the Cockrell Academy in the sense that they would get in and say, oh my, there's so much in here and it looks great, but where do you recommend I begin? So we are removing that barrier, getting around the obstacle, saying, come this direction. This is this is what you should learn next. Good. I think it's great. And also, I guess, to tell them that you made the courses a la carte too. So if they want to buy a course outside the system, anytime they can buy it. Yes, that, that is something. And, and I'll just say Lee, Lee has wanted for a while and I was stubborn and I said, Oh no, let's keep them all in the Cockrell Academy. But we would have people that would want time management magic, for example, but you had to enroll in the Cockrell Academy to get it. Well, now they are all available. You can go to leecockrell.com. And there's a store page, uh, cockerelacademy.com. There's a store page where you can find all the content, the courses, the the Main Street Leader books by Lee and 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 Dan Cockerel and Valerie Cockerel. We, they're they're all there. So we've we've tried to make more reset, more resources, more accessible to people by not putting them all behind the Cockerel Academy. All right, yeah. that can be great. I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out. Yeah, I think I think we're going to hear some good things about that. And if you want to hear good things about a vacation, call our friends at Magical Vacation Planner. You can reach them at 407-442-2694. Let them know that Lee Cockerell sent you and he can uh, they will help you plan a vacation that perhaps is as good as a, an experience as going through the Cockerell Academy. We'll see about that though. All right, Lee. Well, th this is, I feel like we're, we're off and running now. Episode 501. We rarely pay attention to what number we're on, but it felt significant to celebrate 500 and now start the next round. And a little piece of Lee Cockrell family trivia for you before we go. John Jarvis, who was the director of the national park service. I mentioned earlier, he told me that it was, Lee Cockrell's sister-in-law that hired him into the Na <laughs> National Park Service. Oh, man. Small world. A small world indeed. How about that? Yeah. All right, Lee. Great seeing you again. Thank you. And thank you for listening to Creating Disney Magic. Until next week, go out and create magic for others. <laughs>